Coordinate PA is the next generation of utility coordination. Otherwise known as CPA, it's a better approach to sharing projects online through a web-based and map-based secure repository. CPA enables users to add and or import existing projects, find opportunities with others who want to coordinate, share project documents, and communications with designated contacts, and notify facility owners and other contacts at any stage of a project. Today, I'm going to discuss the process of CPA from conception to construction. We will go through the three stages of entering a ticket into CPA, planning, design, and construction and with the help of some friends, show how our different stakeholders are involved. The first thing we need is a project. I meet both of those qualifications. I'm a friend and I have a project for you. Perfect. You get the role of the project owner. Tell me about the job. We're planning to replace a water line that runs along the north side of Market Street in Camp Hill Borough. It's about two and a half miles long, and should take six months to complete construction. There's going to be a huge disruption with traffic and the residents of the borough are not going to be happy while it's happening. It's important that we coordinate our effort with all stakeholders so that we cause minimal disruption. That's a perfect example. To determine if a project is complex and should be entered into CPA, we use the acronym DISC. It stands for Duration, Impact, Size, and Complexity. Any project meeting one or more of these criteria may benefit from being entered into CPA and going through the process we're outlining today. Duration. How long will the excavators be on site? A day? A week? A month? A year? Impact. Will the work impact the public, facility owners' lines, traffic patterns, or cause other disruptions? Size. Is the project over 1,000 feet or intersection to intersection, whichever is greater? Complexity. Is this multiple sites? How complex is the work? Your job fits the description and should definitely be placed into CPA as a complex project. A complex project means an excavation that involves more work than properly can be described in a single locate request or any project designated as such by the excavator or facility owner as a consequence of its complexity or its potential to cause significant disruption to lines or facilities and the public, including excavations that require scheduling locates over an extended time frame. By that definition, my job is a complex project. Absolutely, and you're not going to believe all the benefits you get with CPA. Define projects with a tool inside a web browser. No special software is required. Document project records in a secure repository. Add, manage, and set permissions for project contacts. Share and communicate with other CPA users and facility owners receiving project tickets. Identify project collaboration opportunities. Save money for all parties. Improve the level of service to constituents. For a complex project, request meetings, use templates, and upload other documents and associate phase and construction tickets. Project status and updates in near real time. A common map base. With all of those benefits, you can see why there are more of our stakeholders using CPA every day. As I mentioned in the beginning, we're going to discuss the three stages of entering a ticket into CPA, planning, design, and construction. Let's begin with planning. Our first stakeholder is the project owner. Hello, project owner. Hello again. A project owner is any person who or which engages in excavation or construction or any other project which requires excavation or demolition work. The first thing I need to do is define the project scope. This will tell us all the details that are needed to complete the job. So in my example, I told you that I was planning to build a water line replacement job on Market Street in Camp Hill Borough. Once I know where the work is going to happen, 
I'm going to enter the entire scope of the project onto Coordinate PA. This is going to serve as a central hub for information, communication, and ticket placement for the four affected stakeholder groups. Me as the project owner, my designer, my excavator, and the local underground facility owners. I also have the option to make my project public or private. If it's private, then only I can see it. If it's public, anybody in CPA can view it. I can change my project privacy whenever the need arises, but I want this project to be public. Hopefully, somebody else is planning work in areas that overlap, and we can work together. While we're here, let's take a look to see what other projects will be going on in Camp Hill Borough. If I see any other jobs on Market Street, then I'll have the opportunity to collaborate with them. For example, I see that the gas company will be working on the same street as me three months from now. I can contact the gas company to coordinate our jobs so that we can open up and then repair the road at the same times. When we all work together, we save significant amounts of both time and money. Now that the project is in CPA and I've checked for other projects to coordinate with, it's time to hire a designer and begin the design phase. Hi, I'm the designer. Thanks for hiring me. A designer means any architect, engineer, or other person who or which prepares a drawing for a construction or other project which requires excavation or demolition work. Hi designer! Let me add you as a contact to the project so you can do your thing. Because I created the project, my security role defaults to project administrator. Anytime an administrator adds somebody to the project, we can also select their security role. Designer, I'm going to make you a project administrator as well, so that you can make any changes, add any necessary contacts, and when we're ready for it, add the excavator to the project as well. Thanks. As part of the design phase, I'll be using CPA to enter my design tickets, upload blueprints and SUE information, and communicate with facility owner design contacts. First, it's my job to submit a design ticket. There are two types of tickets depending on how soon the final design is to be completed. If the design request is more than 90 business days out, then I will be submitting a preliminary design ticket. This step is optional. The final design ticket, to be submitted 90 to 10 business days before the final design is to be completed, is required by law to request the line and facility information. This is when I'll send plans to the involved facility owners, allowing them to show where their lines intersect with my design. This can be done electronically through CPA. The facility owner will receive my plans and respond to them through CARL. The information provided by the facility owners will help establish subsurface utility engineering levels C and D, which are existing records and visual above ground indicators. For big projects like this one, we'll also be using quality levels B and A of Sioux before any excavation occurs. Since that's a conversation that takes place between the designer and the project owner at the bid stage, I'll let my project owner talk more about it. When a project costs $400,000 or more, we need to use sufficient quality levels of Sioux. Regardless of the project budget, it's my job as a project owner to furnish that pertinent data obtained through Sioux to the OneCall system. We're going to upload that information directly to our CPA project. The American Society of Civil Engineers and the Common Ground Alliance provide standard of care guidelines the one call law requires we follow. When applied properly during the design phase, subsurface utility engineering provides significant cost and damage avoidance benefits and the opportunity to correct inaccuracies in existing facility levels. In fact, a 2020 PennDOT study found that for every $1 spent on Sioux, they saw a return on investment of $11.39. So regardless of the size and complexity of your project, Sioux can be your best friend in controlling costs. The American Society of Civil Engineers has established four quality levels, ranging from least accurate to most accurate. Levels C and D, eyeballs in the field and paper records and maps, are ideal for the planning phase. During the preliminary design phase, we'll be using quality level B, field locating. This is where I'll bring in my own private locator to survey the work site. In our final design phase, we'll use level A, the most accurate standard of care. We'll be using soft excavation techniques like air vacuuming to create test holes, daylight those facilities, and determine their exact locations. Sioux results are integrated into the design process 
in which design engineers use the information to create construction plans that accommodate existing infrastructure, thereby reducing the overall risk of conflicts and or damage. Thanks for discussing, Sue. The next step is to review the responses from the facility owners and make adjustments to the design in order to avoid unnecessary conflict. While creating that design is my responsibility to do the following. To show on the drawing the position, type of each facility owner's lines, and the name of the facility owner. To show my one call serial number and the one call phone number on my drawing. To create a new design request of my final design if the scope or project site changes. That concludes the design phase. But before we can move on, the project owner needs to put the project to bid and select an excavator. Thanks, designer. Let me get on that and, ooh, here's a good bid. Let's go with this excavator. Sounds great. I'll add the excavator to the project so they can get on with the construction. Hi, I'm the excavator. Thank you for adding me to the project. An excavator means any person who or which performs excavation or demolition work for himself or for another person. My first step in CPA is to submit a complex project ticket. A complex project ticket requires a 10 business day notice and that ticket does not permit me to excavate. This ticket serves as notice to the affected facility owners that a potentially disruptive project is coming through and may require markouts and protections over an extended area or time frame. Complex project tickets are placed within the CBA project and allow the excavator to schedule a pre-construction meeting to review the project with facility owners. Pre-construction meeting means a scheduled event held by the excavator, designer, project owner, and facility owner or an agent of the excavator, designer, project owner, and facility owner prior to the commencement of excavation or demolition work in a complex project. I need to indicate a time, date, and location for the pre-construction meeting. This location can be either in person or virtual, but the information I should be prepared to share is the same either way. Just like in a routine ticket, all of the affected facility owners will be notified. It is my job to invite all other stakeholders that are involved in this project, such as our project owner and designer friends. The facility owners are required to respond through Carl that they will be either attending the pre-construction meeting or that all of their facilities are clear of our work site. To prepare for the pre-construction meeting, I need to bring the following items. Project plans, maps, a sign-in sheet to record attendees' names, companies' names and email addresses, and a way to record meeting notes and a markout schedule. The good news is there are a couple of templates that you can download from CPA to document attendance and notes. I want to make sure they're downloaded before the pre-construction meeting. Now it's time to hold the meeting. There is a specific protocol that must be followed to conduct a successful meeting. All involved parties, including the designer, project owner, excavator, and facility owners are required to attend the meeting. At the meeting, the parties shall agree upon their individual obligations consistent with the project. The entire scope of the project must be defined at the meeting. Details on phases should be defined as much as possible. Agreement on the scope of tickets will be left to the parties attending the pre-construction meeting. Updates to the project must be completed from within the CPA project. If a facility owner cannot agree to the proposed locate schedule, everyone must work to find a schedule that the one facility owner can agree to. If no agreement can be reached, the excavator must create single excavation notifications from within the project for the areas where the dissenting facility owner operates lines. If an involved party fails to attend the meeting, the excavator may proceed according to the agreement reached at the meeting. Meeting notes shall be taken by the excavator or facility owner calling the meeting. CPA provides a template for your use. The notes shall set forth the agreements made by the parties. Now that the meeting is over, it is important to upload meeting notes and attendance into CPA so that all parties can access it. 
With the planning and agreements out of the way, we're almost ready to submit our routine notifications. Those are the ones that allow us to begin excavation between three and 10 business days after submitting. In the days between placing the ticket and our lawful start date, facility owners will dispatch their locators to mark lines in the work site. Remember, it is important to mark the work site out in white paint or flags so that the locators know where to mark their lines. Now it's time to create the routine notifications through CPA. I'm going to break up the work into several tickets and phases which shall be consistent with the agreements reached at the pre-construction meeting. Because my project is so large, I will be hiring a subcontractor to excavate too. I'll enter their name and info into CPA so that they have permission to enter their routine notifications. Remember, subcontractors can't dig off of my ticket they'll need to place their own. Then when I submit the ticket, all of the affected facility owners will receive it and send their locators out to the site. Once the site is marked, the facility owners will respond through CARL. I will review those responses and head out to document the work site before beginning excavation. If all of the utilities have been marked, I may proceed with the work on my lawful start date. I'll come back to CPA to submit update tickets as needed or agreed upon to have sections of the work site remarked. If information required from the facility owner cannot be provided and my crew needs to ascertain the precise location of any active, abandoned, or unclaimed line, we'll need to use prudent techniques like hand dug test tools and vacuum excavation to expose those lines. I need to notify the project owner of this extra work in writing. We're entitled to compensation for that. After the work is complete, the project owner may install color-coded permanent markers. What a great idea. With permanent markers, I won't have to spend time or money locating my new facilities during future projects. The marks are already there. And that's the process end to end for using CPA to place your complex projects from conception to construction. Thank you all for your help today, stakeholders. If you need any help, you can call any one of the Damage Prevention Liaisons to help you out. In fact, they will attend your pre-construction meeting if possible to make sure everything runs smoothly. You can find the Damage Prevention Liaison in your area and their contact information at pa1call.org liaisons.